Well, the governor's trophy goes to the city of Roseville for the best depiction of life in California. Wow. This is the first ever city of Roseville's entry in the parade and already award winner. They're kicking off a year-long centennial celebration of dreams and opportunities in this unique California city. January 1st, 2009, on the dawn of our centennial year, the city of Roseville's float made its way down the crowded streets of Pasadena. Seen by millions across the country, our participation in the Rose Parade was the ending of a long process and the beginning of our centennial celebrations. It was a dream that brought us together as a community and gave us all a chance to share our pride in our city. The idea first came in 1995. Julia, um, as I understand it, had been actually putting in an application for about 15 years, uh, trying to get Roseville into the Rose Parade. I don't think I told anybody for a few years. The initial reaction from Al Johnson, the city manager at the time, was, oh, keep dreaming big. That was his reaction. And I said, I, we're going to do this. Oh, I thought it was a great idea, um, you know, 100 years. Um, City of Roseville, Rose Parade, it all kind of came together. I thought it was a great idea. And I, I talked to the city manager about it at one time and, and he said when Julia brought this idea to him and, and had it all put together, he said that he just knew that all he had to do was turn her loose. Applying for entry in the Rose Parade is as simple as filling out a single page form. Acceptance, however, is much more difficult. The process is one that's very, very competitive. Uh, this year we had uh, about 39 applicants for 10 open, open positions. When this whole process started, it started with a phone call from uh, one of your uh, city employees to uh, one of our tournament members, uh, a gentleman by the name of Paige Parrish. And Paige called me because he knew I was the float entry chairman this year, and he basically said, uh, I, I need you to do me a favor. You have to know that there's this very, very special community up north called the Roseville, California. I said, Roseville, California. <laughs> it was uh, a little nerve-wracking, uh, particularly because the first feedback we got was that they had not approved our application, that they wanted some more information and some assurances that should they, we be accepted that we would be able to raise the money to pay for the float. We knew it was a well-written application. We, we knew we'd done everything we could possibly do, um, but this was something foreign to us. We have never, we've never applied. So the strategy was we would think of a question every week, and it would be the question of the week, and they would hear from the city, city of Roseville, and they would say, hello, Julia, because <laughs> they knew our voices, and we would just think of a question, so they, they heard from us constantly. On April 21st, the city finally received word, we were in. It was like, oh wow, now what? <laughs> well, I'm told it's our enthusiasm and warmth <laughs> is what uh, made the decision. I think also the name, Roseville, it was a centennial year. It's a very special year. This was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my 25 years as a Tournament of Roses uh, member. When I uh, came forward to the executive committee and recommended that the city of Roseville be part of our 2009 uh, 120th uh, Rose Parade. This was it. We were going to do it. We were in. We celebrated with a news conference at Green Acres Nursery, <laughs> surrounded by hundreds of rose bushes. Well-known local business owner Ken Denio made one of the first donations. Well, thank you very much to Denio's. This is a thousand-dollar check. This is terrific. This is a good start for us. From the beginning, the city council made it clear that this would be a community effort and that no public funds were to be used for any of the $200,000 needed to build the float. So we had to figure out how to pay for this. So uh, there were pennies for the parade jars that were put all over town. People put their spare change in there. And the schools were a very large part of this whole thing. Also nonprofit organizations, you know, women's clubs, men's clubs, uh, service clubs. Some of those people, Bob's Car Wash, the senior living centers, a lot of them have filled them up four or five, six times, and we just go and empty them and leave the jar there and they fill it up again. More than 150 penny jars were spread across the city. Over $15,000 was raised from the penny jars alone. That's one and a half million pennies. 
but the jars served a more important purpose. It also gave the community an opportunity to buy into the float. I think that's the best way to say it. If somebody couldn't make a $100 contribution or a $50 contribution, they could put some change in the jar and feel like they were a part of uh, the city's float and helping to make it happen. There were other ways we could each be part of the float. One way that we could have the community participate if they were not traveling to Pasadena was to have them sign water vials. They are what holds the fresh flowers and keeps them alive from the time the float's decorated all the way through the end of the week when the parade happens. We sold them for $2 and they were able to write um, their name on it, their family's name, their dog's name, whatever they felt that they wanted to put on there with a little Sharpie marker and then those we brought down to Pasadena. Over a thousand personalized water vials were placed on the float, keeping the flowers fresh before and during the parade. One of the best moments for me was walking into the huge tent that houses all the live flowers until you're ready to decorate the float with them, and seeing our racks, and then seeing hundreds of roses with all those signatures. See the flats of fresh flowers all lined up uh, in these little water vials, being ready to put on the, on the float were just beautiful. And those are literally throughout the float. They were up on the top, they were down on um, the bottom of the bed. A lot of them, the majority, were probably in the front. All different colored roses, gorgeous. They all said a part of me was riding on that float, so that, it was a great experience. The community's outpouring of financial support went way beyond pennies and water vials. However, the float could not have been built without the support of our local businesses. The amount of support that we got from local businesses, corporations, was phenomenal. Um, Union Pacific stepping up and being the major sponsor, um, really making a statement about the importance of the city of Roseville to the Union Pacific Corporation. Uh, Roseville was, is, and always will be a railroad town. Well, they stepped up with a $50,000 corporate donation. That was big. This contribution is, is certainly about celebrating the past, but most importantly, it's about our partnership in the future. I mean, 1909, 2009, this is really about 2109 in our next 100 years together, and we're glad to be a partner here. Thank you. The Auburn Area Indian Tribe also participated in the float. I was there when we approached them, and they didn't miss a beat. They were in immediately, which was really nice to see. The United Auburn Indian Community contributed $25,000. Kaiser Permanente and Sutter Roseville Medical Center each gave $15,000. Many other businesses made smaller yet vital contributions to raise the money needed. Float building for the Rose Parade is big business. Each of the four major float builders in the Pasadena area began lobbying for the city's business even before we were officially accepted in the parade. Phoenix Decorating Company was ultimately chosen. A family-owned company located in Pasadena just blocks from the parade route, Phoenix Decorating has been building floats for the Rose Parade for over 30 years. It's very family-oriented, which puts a lot of emotion into it, which is what really what it takes to to produce these things. I think I'm above the 500 number as far as sending floats down Colorado Boulevard. I've, I've been responsible for, for 500 or better floats. That's a lot of floats, but uh, it's, it really is, it, it never gets old. Phoenix Decorating and the city worked hand in hand on the design of the float. We had some folks come down from Roseville and give us a lot of information, tell us a lot about your town. I had the uh, opportunity to come up to Roseville and actually take a look at Roseville and, and, and they showed me around and from there we took uh, pictures uh, back with us and, and took the important elements that we thought were in Roseville and created uh, our own little Roseville here in Pasadena. So the first design was more of a kind of fantasy train, it was all bright colors. The second design looked like we were up in the mountains. It had a railroad trestle and a modern engine and pine trees. And so it evolved with these different design elements. There was one design with the arch that's at the beginning of Vernon Street. We, we asked them to put that on. It looked awful. We asked them to take it off. Because it all came down to we wanted the, the float to really represent the essence of Roseville what Roseville is all about. After weeks of collaboration, the final float design was ready to be unveiled. On August 5th, with Tournament of Roses officials in attendance, Mayor Jim Gray gave his State of the City address at the Magic Circle Theater. 
At the end of it, we had behind the curtains uh, this huge, I forget it, I think it's 16 foot by 24 foot uh, rendering of the float. And we unveiled the float at the, at the end of the, the speech. You have a fantastic community. The community support is fantastic. And uh, I feel privileged to be here. I have really enjoyed myself here today. And if I were starting over, I think I'd want to come and live in Rosewood. All right, yeah. What a, what a wonderful design with, a, with a, the railroad theme. You know, the train was just um, prominent in the whole float. It really made a statement. Roseville being so outdoorsy makes good floats. I mean, outdoor floats are always make good floats. So it was, there was a lot to work with. Roseville's got a lot of good elements to work with. You know, it was spectacular, but it was inclusive. It had the, the oak tree, it had the deer, it had the fish, it had the flowers, it had our the, the stone that's in Maidu Park. It had everything that really signified our community. Work on the float steel shell would take more than three months to complete. When done, our float would be 55 feet long, 30 feet high, and 18 feet wide. Most of the float is, uh, is steel construction. We use a lot of aluminum screen wire that we cover the steel shapes with. Uh, there's a lot of uh, custom chemicals that we use that have been actually developed for this industry. Uh, cocooning is one of them. We spray, it's a, it's a latex coating, we spray out over the, the screen wire after, the, after it's been put over the shape, and then we can paint that. During construction, the floats are taken on multiple test drives. The floats' maneuverability, safety, and moving parts are all checked, leaving nothing to chance on parade day. Most floats take um, four to 5,000 hours of construction and another four to 5,000 hours of decoration time goes into any, any float. Riding in the train car on top of the float would be the Roseville City Council, representatives from several of the float's major sponsors, and two winners of a fundraising auction, including Colin Fatt, the president of the Roseville Chamber of Commerce. The float riders were introduced during a community send-off hosted by Fountains at Roseville. Israel Maldonado was selected by Union Pacific to represent them in the train's engine. At first, he wasn't quite sure what he was getting himself into. It wasn't really clicking because I couldn't identify the Roseville and the Rose Bowl together. I automatically thought Rose, Roseville. And I said, sure, I was excited. I was, I, I'll be more than proud to be part of it. And uh, I called my wife and I said, hey, I want to be in the, in the Rose Bowl parade in, in Roseville. She's like, what are you talking about? It took a few minutes for Israel's wife to explain to him that the parade was in Pasadena, not down Vernon Street. I was in, a, in disbelief, you know, I'm like, am I really going? I, I was just waiting for someone to say, hey, you were just kidding, <laughs> you know, you're not going. Chris Gist placed one of the winning bids for a seat on the float, but his Rose Parade story goes back several years. He and his father, John, would take a special trip each year to see the parade. A lot of it was just the two of us coming down and we would spend time going out to dinner, just relaxing, having that one-on-one -on -one time as, as father and son. And it was something I grew to just really love doing, as did he. We did uh, lose my father about a year and a half ago. And this is, as much as it is the fulfillment of a personal dream for me, it is a way for our entire family to pay tribute to him. Kay Gist sent in a check for $1,000 in um, honor of the John C. Gist family. She just said to pick 40 or 50 water vials. We had a volunteer sit down and write John C. Gist on, on every one of those. And that was her way of remembering her husband and the parade that was very important to him and his son. A couple times I had to catch myself. I was starting to think back about my father and but I had to catch myself. Uh, I didn't want to get emotional while I'm sitting there writing it, but there were, there were a couple moments where the memory of, of him uh, and uh, he and I doing something that we really enjoyed, it came to mind and it was, it was nice. It was, I couldn't have asked for a better way to honor him. And then there was Queen Margaret. Margaret was the icing on the cake. 
Meeting Margaret probably put us over the top as far as excitement, joy, and just the connection. Margaret Huntley Main was the Tournament of Roses Queen in 1940, and at the time of the 2009 Rose Parade was the oldest living Rose Queen. Julia Burroughs heard Margaret was living in the area, literally a queen in our midst. And so Gina Garbolino and I went and had lunch. And they stayed and they stayed and it was just marvelous. They loved my album and they ooed over my dress and we had such a lovely time. And it was an immediate um, warm friendship started. I mean, it was like when we walked in the door, we knew we were gonna be friends forever. Uh, this woman is remarkable. And they asked me if I would ride on the float. And I said, would I? Margaret quickly became the center of attention in Pasadena in the days leading up to the parade, posing for pictures, signing autographs, and graciously answering every question asked of her. During the parade, she even wore her Queen's tiara from 1940. A week before the parade, all the floats are moved to large float barns around Pasadena, ready and waiting for their decorations. Everybody wanted to be a part of this. They all wanted to decorate. The number of people that were involved was overwhelming. I was, I was overwhelmed by the number of volunteers that came down and helped on the float. I'd have to compare it to um, planning a wedding. <laughs> of course, that was for, you know, 300 and some out of town guests that all needed hotels. <laughs> just, just seeing the floats and the float barn besides ours and all of the intricacies and all of the activities that have to go into decorating the float. Um, the design is one thing, but then decorating is another. It's a lot more than you think it is. And when you walk in the first day and there are no flowers on the float and there's a little bit of, there are leaves here and there, a little bit has been done and then you leave at the end of an eight hour shift and you see how it's been organized and how much work has been done. That was very impressive how they, how they make that whole thing happen. It's also wonderful to see our citizens participate. And they were there with an incredible sense of excitement. And sometimes they would, they would work like eight-hour shifts. And some of those jobs were mundane. I was fluffing flowers. We got carnations, cut carnations, and um, we had to spread out the flower itself, make it bigger than the carnation was that we got. So what we were doing was fluffing out the flowers. Fluff and stuff is what we call them. We made hundreds of, of them. It was interesting at times to be standing there and literally you're like what's, what's on my head and literally somebody's shoe is right above your head because they're up on scaffolding. The paint basically tells you what kind of flower or what kind of material we're going we're gonna to decorate in. Every square inch of the float has to be decorated in, in a organic vegetable matter. That's, that's part of the rules. Ultimately about 15,000 live flowers were used on the float along with untold amounts of silver leaf, rice, nuts, seeds, tea leaves, fitament pistachio shells, and ground dried flowers. Media interest in the Rose Parade is always tremendous. Our new mayor, Gina Garbolino, and former mayor, Jim Gray, were in high demand from our local radio and TV stations. Our float also served as the backdrop for the Today Show's Al Roker during his live parade preparation coverage. Even some of the stations from Los Angeles uh, came out and interviewed us. What you're looking at here is one of the floats from Roseville, California. And at one point, he, he was listening to his earpiece. And at this time, I did not have an earpiece on, so I did not know what he was listening to. I have not seen the Roseville Stomp in many years. That famous dance. Rose, Roseville Stomp? It's the Roseville Stomp. And the next thing you know, he's twirling me around. And I thought, OK, well. I just got to go with this, you know. So then I said, thank you. And then he kept twirling, <laughs> and I kept twirling. 
<laughs> First, a lot of the people from Roseville around there were laughing. It was, it was pretty funny. And it was actually memorable, and I, but I didn't worry about it. I thought, ah, oh, Los Angeles, you know, nobody, nobody will see it that I know. Mm, I'm not so sure that was true, so. <laughs> By December 31st, all the floats are finished and ready for the judges. The floats were all lined up in front of the barn and out on the street. Uh, and then we had to all be on the float. They do the judging just like you're in the parade. So everybody had to be on the float, they had to be good to go. All of a sudden, the, all the animation was working. This surprised me when the wheels were turning, the smoke was coming out of, out of the, uh, the chimney. Uh, the whistle was playing and, and the music was going and it was came alive. This is the day. This is the day. We put on the red jackets and it's it's not a practice. This is real. Uh, I was very excited. I woke up well before I needed to. I didn't sleep much that night. We all got to the float very early. It was still dark. Queen Margaret had potatoes, hot potatoes in a bag, because when she was queen, they held hot potatoes in their hands to keep them warm. And so she had a potato for each of us, and I remember Mayor Gina Garbolino and I just holding those potatoes because we were just freezing. At 6 a.m., Tournament of Roses officials began announcing the results of the float judging. Well, they get down to number 10, and that's Governor's Trophy. Governor's Award, City of Roseville, Entertaining dreams for a century. Phoenix Decorating Company. And then they call and say, you guys just won one of the most significant trophies there is, which is best representation of life in California. They actually stopped our float, and that banner came right out in front, and everybody cheered and clapped and on the sides and behind us, and it just, there was so much cheering and happiness and joy that we had won that award. And then of course the parade starts. And then it's like, wow. The National Broadcasting Company presents the 120th Tournament of Roses Parade. When you turn into Colorado Boulevard, that is a sight I'll never forget. It's even hard to explain, but you turn into it and all of a sudden you see the street just Jam pack. Oh, that was that was uh, amazing uh, to sit on top of a locomotive, seeing the smoke come out of it, the blowing the horn. They have the grandstands, and all the lights are just shining on our float, and people are just so excited and happy and cheering about about our float. Time kind of stopped. We didn't think about um, you know, is this two hours or is this an hour or whatever. You didn't. You just, you were just there. So I just decided I'm going to stick my head out the window, and I'm going to stick my head out the window the whole parade route, and I'm going to have fun. About halfway along the five and a half mile parade route, two large groups of Roseville residents, more than 700 in all, were on the edge of their seats waiting to see their float. We kept looking for them because we didn't know quite exactly where they were. As the float was getting closer and closer, you could hear the Roseville crowd. As soon as we could see the stack on the train engine, everybody stood up, standing ovation started screaming. The whole stands were up on our feet, shaking our pom-poms, throwing confetti, smiling, screaming, yelling. It was obvious these people were from Roseville. I mean, that was just really neat, just very exciting. I mean, it was loud getting up to that point, but when we got to, up to the city of Roseville people, the people, our supporters, everybody was there, we knew we were home. Yeah, they were making noise like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it was just like, I get goosebumps right now talking about it because it was just a big thrill to see those people out there just cheering us on. I think everybody inside the train just, I think we went crazy. I'm out there waving with them, and um, that made me feel like part, all of us are together. The pride, the pride and the excitement and, and their response, it was just unbelievable. Every one of us left there knowing we did the best job, we put the best float out on the Colorado Boulevard, 
and that if we could do it over again, it, we wouldn't have done anything different. That really was what we wanted to do. From a dream 15 years ago through the day of the parade, no one single person was more responsible for Roseville's successful entry in the Rose Parade than Julia Burroughs. The bottom line is without Julia, it would not have happened. It was a dream she had. Uh, she loves Roseville, she loves her community, and she intrinsically knew that this was how we should celebrate our centennial. And she was right. Julia always had a positive attitude. She always had a smile on her face. She knew what her dream was, what the dream was for the city, and she was going to make it happen. And without her vision and her remarkable skill of organization and her ability to look for opportunities, wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen. Because it, it, was, it was a huge project. It was, there was a lot to it. And she just did it effortlessly. And again, between Julia and a lot of staff members, a lot of volunteers, and Jim Gray. It wouldn't happen. It was really good for the people of Roseville. It, it seemed like uh, so many people got behind this. It was one of those things that's built slow and continued steady throughout the year and right on through the parade itself. And it couldn't have come at a better time with, you know, here we are in this really down economy and, uh, you know, you need something, to, I think, to lift you up. Even though we got a chance to be on the parade float, you know, it felt like a lot of those people who paid that price for it were on there as well. And it was a representation of the whole city of Roseville, not just whoever was on the float. It was the representation of the city of Roseville. There was a lot of civic pride throughout the whole process from the day that we started raising money until the float was actually in the parade. You could feel it, that, especially that day, riding on the float. Community spirit was great because we were all working towards making this float um, and then being involved in the Rose Parade as a kickoff to our 100 year anniversary. I think it was great for community pride and community spirit. And so to have a focal point, to have something that everyone owns, everyone has a piece of it, everyone has a story whether they went or not, but that's Roseville, that's my city, we had a Rose Parade float, has been one of the most rewarding parts of being a city employee this year because it, it is hopeful and it's happy and we kicked off the new year with probably the biggest thing we could have ever done. I think we created a sense of civic pride that this was Roseville, that was our float, those were our people, that was our award, it was ours as a city. It's a